Hello, my name's Si. I'm one of the technical managers at OnePLM. I'd like to do a couple of demonstrations today based around how we can organise our features and models, specifically within the Part Navigator. We've got three key tools that we can use when working with models to create organisation. We can use feature groups, part modules, and something that I'd like to focus a little on later in the demonstration, design groups. Let's just recap on what feature groups are to start with. Feature groups um, are a way of organising features within the part navigator. As you can see here, I've got a feature group which contains a number of different features. Feature groups named, and this one is floating, so it sits in the middle of the part navigator. Whilst they give us the ability to do some basic grouping and organisation organization of features, they don't give us any method to control the model update. So for example, if I was to go into this feature group and edit this blend by simply double clicking on it, what you'll notice is the model history rolls all the way back right from the very end to this uh, makes it the current feature. I can make a simple change and when I choose OK, then I've got to sit and wait for the entire model to update. On a very complicated model, this can take a lot of time. From experience, they tend to cause more problems than they solve, especially when models get very complicated. Um, and if you, you've got new people coming into the team or people who are perhaps unfamiliar with the model, then it can make them difficult to navigate. Especially when you start trying to add features into a point in the model. So for example, if I right click here and make this feature group active, you'll see it goes green and I can now add another blend into the model. I want to choose OK. You'll see the blend has been added and the timestamp is much later than the previous blend which was this one. So it's sort of like equivalent to mixing the pages up in a book and it can make models quite unintuitive to, to manage. So let's take a look at the second way of organising models which are part modules. Here we've got um, a relatively simple model and if we scroll down to the bottom of the part navigator you'll see I've got a linked part module. So this is one that's been created where the feature that's highlighted on the screen here is actually been de uh, designed and modelled in a separate part file. If I expand the node you'll see I've got two um, separate nodes, inputs and outputs. The inputs will be some faces from the model which have been used to trim away the, uh, the extrude here. And the output is this body itself and that comes from the linked module. So how do we make a change to this or perhaps um, demonstrate how somebody else or a different person, different designer could be working on this part at the same time? If I right click on the module here, I can say display linked part and this will open a brand new part file. You can see I've now got this separate tab open and the body that we were looking at in the in the master part previously is now captured as a single solid in this part file. Let's take a look at the linked part module. If we expand this, you'll see there's an additional node in here. So rather than just inputs and outputs, we've also got this work mode. I'm going to activate the module. I'm going to turn on some options here to delay the link updates and delay the model updates. If I expand the work node, you'll see I've got all the features that were used in order to develop this, um, this solid. I'm going to add a feature to, to the, the top here, a simple blend, and choose OK. So you can see that my part has now gone up out of date, the output is out of date. If we just quickly flip back to the master, you'll notice that there's no change been made in this, and down here you can see we've got all sorts of warnings indicating that the part is out of date and the output bodies are unknown. So if we go back to the top mounts too, 
and we can turn off the delay model update you'll see that that updates the output here and if we deactivate the module and then change back to the casing you'll see that the exclamation mark has gone and I've now got this red square so at this point I can now click this button or this uh, this icon sorry and you'll see those changes are pulled through into this master part let's say the design's finished I no longer want to uh, have somebody doing additional work to this this separate part or um, any, any design changes and I'm ready to release this so we can merge the module which will pull all the features from this part into the top level so menu format part modules and we can merge the module and you'll see that by doing that my work node has been pulled into this part file and now all my features exist in here if you wanted to carry on making edits to this you can activate the module you'll see the module become active and we can make a change to this blend here again and then when we deactivate the module by clicking on the top here you'll see the changes have now been pushed through to the output body which has been united to the casing so let's move on and take a look at the final method for this demonstration and this is one I'm really quite excited about and I think it's going to fundamentally change the way many of us work with NX and design components and these are called design groups I've got a bit of a, a passion for mountain biking um, I have a, a stem my handlebar stem is made by a company called Unite Components and I spent some time on a rainy day when I was bored remodeling it and thought how can we use design groups as a, a, a this stem more importantly to, to demonstrate a use for design groups so this is actually an assembly you'll see in here I've got the green stem body the blue stem cap and the six cap screws which would hold it and secure everything in place notice I've also got another part here which I've got currently got hidden which is called stem v2 master this is where all the design work was done if I was to take a look at the individual files you'll see if I make this the work part the stem body it's just a linked body and if I take a look at the stem cap you'll see that that is also just a linked body so really simple components if this was going to be used in a large assembly it would make them very fast to load very little computational overhead so let's take a look at how this was designed if I make stem v2 master the displayed feature or displayed part you'll notice that it still looks like I've got an assembly minus the screws but when we look in the assembly navigator it's clear to see we've got no um, assembly structure it's just a single component file where it gets interesting is when we take a look in the part navigator and what we'll see here is that we've got a number of design groups we've got one for the stem cap which contains all the features which designed the stem cap we have one for the, the stem body we've got a couple of trim planes which have been used to create the gap in the middle and then we've got the base solid so as you can see the base solid is like a space claim that defines the overall dimensions and proportions of the stem if I expand this you'll see it's relatively simple so there's no detail in it it's just very simple sketches extrudes and intersects if I activate the group and do show only you can see the sketches the extrude the intersect I'm just going to change my modeling preferences I'm going to go check on modeling preferences I'm going to go into preferences modeling and then on the update tab I'm going to make sure that the delay model is turned on and the granularity is set to group this is quite important when we start to work with design groups so how are the other two parts modeled or the other two modules modeled uh, sorry design groups modeled that's the word 
So once this base this base solid has been created, then an extracted body is then copied or created in the stem body design group. If I make this the current feature, you'll see it's just a direct replica of the solid that was in base solid. All the design features, all the design work and detail work is now carried out in this design group. When I run to the end of this design group, you'll see that the, the stem body is now in its finished design state. If we take a look at the stem cap, we'll expand it, use the show only, make this active, and again, you'll see that the, the start of this, of the stem cap, is just another extracted body from the base solid here, and then all the, de the details and design are added in this design group. So what's the benefit to this? Well, first of all, organisation. We can see that we've got clearly labelled design groups, um, easy to identify um, where, where a solid was modelled, but it also gives us the ability, as we've seen, to show and hide individual groups. So I can right click on the stem body, say show only. I can right click on, click on the base solid, show only. So it's given us a real high degree of organisation within the model. The real key to this, or the real benefit to this, is when it comes to making updates. So we saw with feature groups, when we update a feature, the model has to run all the way through to the end to make sure that the entire model isn't adversely affected by the change you've made. So I've got my delay model update turned on here. I'm going to go into the base solid and just make a change. I'm going to change the length of the stem. So we'll look in the top view, go to details, I'm going to change this reach expression to 50. And you'll see the stem has now increased in length, so this would ultimately give my handlebars a further forward position. Take a look at the design groups. Notice that I've now got red squares in the, the up-to-date column telling us that the groups are out of date. Now, if I was, work, was at a point in the design where I was only working on the stem cap, I don't have to wait for all these other uh, design groups to update. And that's because I've not created any references to features within the previous design groups. So I can simply, let's just, let's just show the, the bodies. If I right click and do, um, in fact I'll use Control W and we'll show solid bodies. You'll see that the bodies are currently out of date. But what I can do is update this stem cap completely independently of the stem body. So you notice that this is now up to date and we'll have features in these other in these other design groups which are still out of date. Now let's just update the entire model. Another real benefit to this is when we come to perhaps working on the, the stem body here. I can make changes within here and even roll features back to a point in time that don't affect any later features in the stem cap design group. So I'm just going to hide my base solid here and we'll go and look at adding a feature. Let's activate the stem body group. I'm going to roll back to this point in time. So you can see the model history has rolled back but if I expand the stem cap group, all these later features haven't been rolled back. You don't get that with design with, with uh, feature groups. The model will always roll back to a point in time. So I'm going to add an additional feature in here. Let's, let's do a simple chamfer. You can see the chamfer's been added in this position and I can go right the way through to the end of my design group and I've not affected any of the other features in the stem cap. So design groups give us a way to give uh, really control the update of a model and create a lot of organisation. We can 
activate design groups and if we delay the, up, the model update then changes that we make in that design group will only affect that design group. The model history does not need to run from start to finish providing you've not got references to features in other, other design groups. So just a quick word on how the assembly was created. You'll notice that I've got two product interfaces up here, the stem body and the stem cap, and these were then used to generate the two components in my assembly level, the stem body and the stem cap, the simple wavelengths. Let's take another look at an example, slightly different, um, a little more complex perhaps, but show you how we can use design groups in uh, the context of a skeleton um, model or a skeleton part. So sticking on the theme of bikes, I've got um, the geometry for a bike frame. I've got some PMI on there which are giving us um, a bit of information about which expression controls the, the geometry. And you'll notice yet again that it is only a single part file, it's not actually an assembly. If we take a look in the part navigator, you'll see that I've got a number of design groups. And we've got these user expressions, which I'm using um, as part of a parameter table. So for example, if I wanted to change this bike geometry to to different sizes. I'm just going to turn off some of these delay updates and explain the benefit of uh, using the, the uh, design groups and delaying model updates. So if I go into the parameter table, you'll see I've got three different sizes of frame, a small, a medium and a large. By double clicking on one of these parameter tables or these configurations, you'll see that even on a relatively simple part, it takes a while for all the features to update. Double click on another one, we can see the frame geometry updating. But again, we're sitting here on a very simple CAD model and it takes a few seconds to update. If I right click on this and deactivate the parameter table completely, and we'll just do the same thing by editing the user expressions. So I could go and change the, the reach from 500 to 350 here and every time you press enter on a single expression we have to sit and wait for the entire model to update. So in a minute I'm going to come back and show you how we can control the updates on these design groups, make very quick changes to the skeleton if we just take a look at this and do show only. You'll see there's the traditional skeleton that people may be familiar with using a sketch or a number of sketches to define a wireframe of a part. But what we've got in this example, of course, is um, all the solids as well. Now, the solids, by the way, are not the finished article. They are very simple CAD models. You'll notice that if we take a look at the, the, the interface of the, the top tube and the um, down tube here, it's a perfect flush fit. They've just been trimmed to this head tube and if I just hide this head tube a second you'll notice that the walls of the, the tube aren't perpendicular to the, the cylindrical walls of the tube, also the wall thickness isn't perpendicular to the cylindrical tube. So these have just uh, been created to give the uh, perhaps the owner or the, the, uh, the, the project leader a bit of flesh on the bones, literally putting flesh onto the skeleton. So as we make changes to our model then you know, we can see how that's affecting the geometry of, uh, of the tubes rather than just a wireframe of the sketches. So I've also got this bike frame WA. If I make this active, you'll see that this is an assembly. In here, we've got all the different features or parts, sorry, that have been linked from the frame master. So we're gonna show you um, an extra bit of organization here. We're going to freeze these links. These are all wavelength. Let me just show you. If I double click on, let's go with the, um, the seat tube and expand it, you'll see there's the link body. But there's also some additional features in the majority of these parts. And these have been used to define the as manufactured part. And you'll see when I zoom in, I've actually got weld gaps. We've got a nice little bit of clearance between all the tubes and what you'll see is 
the walls are all perpendicular to the cylindrical, or the wall thicknesses are all perpendicular to the cylindrical faces. Okay, and even at the at the top here, there is gaps and clearance, as you would expect on a welded assembly. I've purposely missed out the head tube, and I'll show you how this was created using a product product interface in a little while. But let's first of all freeze this assembly. I'm going to right click on these components, go to Wave, and freeze them in session. I'll just pull this out a bit. You'll notice, notice I've got some funky little ice cubes here telling me that the links are all frozen. So back over in the Frame Master, if I wanted to work on this without having to wait for all these other parts to update, then yet again, I can delay the model update. I'm going to pull my part navigator out and we'll activate the skeleton group and actually we'll just do show only. So now I can go and make changes to my bike or the changes to the geometry. We'll change the reach to 500. You notice that the changes are much faster. I'm not having to wait now for all these other design groups to update. Every time I edit an expression, the change is pretty quick. Let's just do a couple more. So I've made some significant changes to the model and if I now wanted to go and update or work on some of these later groups, I'm going to bring my solids back and you'll see that if I was to select the update next to head tube, the head tube will update. If I go to rear seat stay here, the rear seat stays updated. You can see the angles have changed nothing's failed. If I go to the um, rear wheel mount, you notice that that is now connected back in. Or we could go to the cross tube and now the down tube. And finally the rear mirror which is currently off and all my model is now up to date. And again, if I wanted to do that by, by, via parameter tables, I go into the parameter tables, and let's activate the small one. I'm going to choose OK. You can see my skeleton's updated, and I could once again choose to update you know, individual design groups. We'll go with the cross tube this time, and then we'll go with the down tube. And if you want to do the whole model, we can just click this out of date button by the model history and the whole model will update. So there's a little look at how we can use design groups to generate um, very quick, easy to manage parts. Um, multiple solid bodies in here. We could assign materials to all these feet, all these solid bodies, which will then when we wave link them carry through into the assembly file. For a last look, let's just go to the, the frame WA. Oh, beg your pardon, we were going to show how to create um, a product interface. So the head the head tube is missing from the from the um, the frame welded assembly. And you'll see I've got this product interfaces folder with all these bits in here. So I'm going to go to assemblies, interface, create a new one pick this body and just rename it. Choose OK. You can see I've now got a new product interface. When I choose OK, that now lives in here. Back at the frame WA, I have a blank part file, head tube. I'm going to double click this to make it active and use the wave interface linker, find my frame master and then pick the 
head tube from the interface list. Choose OK. And there we go. We've now created our links body. Let's pull this open. And we're going to use the associativity manager to delay the geometry, review after updates, and edit the frozen status. These are all the parts I had frozen. I'm going to unfreeze these and choose OK. Update the session. And you can see I've now got a little slider so I can take a look at before and after the changes were applied in the frame master part because I've controlled the wavelengths, I've frozen them and then used the associativity manager to review those changes. Cancel that and choose OK. There's my finished frame. We'll just do that once more, make one more change. I'm going to freeze these once more. Back at the frame master, we'll change this to the large size. We'll go into the tools, parameter tables, make this large, choose OK. Notice that the, all the design groups are out of date, so we'll just update the entire frame here. And back over at the WA, we'll use the Wave Associativity Manager to unfreeze all the parts in the session, and then we'll update the session. So all those changes have now been pushed through into the individual component files, and you can see we've got the before and after of the, the changes we made. Okay, thanks very much, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to know any more, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.